The first step, as I mentioned before, is phase identification. It can be done in Profex, but it's not one of, of the, the core features of Profex. You will soon see that it, it has its limits, what is possible in Profex. Um, and we might need third-party software for that. I will explain it. But let's first discuss some basic uh, information about Profex. So obviously I'm the programmer. Um, it's, as I mentioned this morning, it's a, a spare time project of mine. It's not related to my work at RMS Foundation. I use it a lot and my colleagues also. So um, a lot of the features I implement in Profex uh, are inspired by my own workflow at work. So um, it's optimized certainly for our workflows, but ho hopefully also for other people's workflows. The license is an open source license, GPL version 2 or later. That means you are free to share it with anyone you want. Uh, you can use it commercially, academically, privately. There is absolutely no restriction. The only thing that is regulated by the license is if you modify it, you have to publish these modifications under the same license. So you cannot take Profex, modify it and sell it as a different product. The license will require you to publish the, re the modified version under the same license. I started working on it in 2003, for a long time only for personal use, for 10 years. And in 2013 I decided to make it public and to so I created a website and uploaded it and then soon after I gave the first workshop and the user base started to grow. It runs on all major platforms, Windows, Linux, Mac, also the new Mac Silicon platform. And the read file refinement is done by a different program, by a kernel that performs the refinement. And this, the, the one it's using nowadays is called BGMN. It was developed in Freiberg in Germany by Professor Bergmann. That's what this acronym means, Bergmann. And it's a very powerful and very stable and, and also kind of convenient uh, kernel. Initially, Profex worked with FullProf, and which had, um, which also is kind of similar. It, it reads text files and writes text files. But um, once I learned about BGMN, it, it was easier to implement from a programmer's point of view. So addressing uh, BGMN from, from, the, from Profex is easier than interacting with full prof. So that's why I preferred to change to BGMN. The website, you know, probably the current stable version is 5.2.7. And okay. So when you open Profex, you will see the main window with this uh, hazy logo of Profex in the background. That's where we will mostly work, where the, the, the plot is shown and where the text files are edited. And all around it, it uh, are these dock windows. These are modules we can open or close or rearrange. And I will now switch to live Profex. For the rest, I will strictly follow the, the slides, but I will demonstrate it live in Profex, which is a bit easier. But if you want to come back and understand what I did, you should be able to find it in the slides. So I will try to stick as closely as possible to these slides. So the first thing I want to show is these dock windows. It's a bit hard to see now. Once we loaded the scan, it's much easier to see, but you can rearrange them by grabbing with the mouse and dragging them somewhere else. So the project list, for example, it's now free floating. I could move it to a second screen to, to just spread my, my windows to two screens. I can also snap it back to its position. So it snaps back here. I could stack them on top of each other. So like this. And now I have this tab down here. I can switch between the two stacked dock windows or if I close them, so I will always find them again in the window menu. So I can open them again here. This is my preferred workspace. Also between the dock windows, you will find these splitters. You can change the size here and here. 
or here. So you can arrange it to your own liking. Then when to open a scan file, we can go to File, Open Raw Scan File. And then, for example, if you downloaded the examples I distributed before the workshop, there's one basic refinement. And down here, you can select the file format. The easiest way is to just to leave it at all files. Then it will show, um, of course, this is not a scan file, but these are two. It's the same file. My instrument always saves the old and the new format, and I just keep them together all the time. So it's, it doesn't matter which one you open. The BRML is the new format by Bruker. So you can open this one and then it will show the scan. And now it's a bit easier to, to recognize these different dock windows because the, there's a bit more contrast. You can also, um, if, if you prefer that, you, you can just drag and drop your scan files on the main window. So from the from the examples folder, I can just drag and drop one or several files here and it will open. That's maybe a bit easier. Um, on the left, in my arrangement of the windows, the projects, so one, every file we open creates an empty refinement project. So if I open multiple files, for example, if I also open the raw file, now I have the BRML and the raw file in two separate projects, but they have the same content, so it looks exactly the same. So here, this is my list of refinement projects. In this project, I can have several scans. Now it's just the raw scan, the, the, the measured one. Later, we will have the calculated scan in the same project and all the, the background, the difference curve. So then once the refinement is done, we, have, we will have multiple scans in one project. At the moment, it's just uh, the measured scan. Um, so that's the difference between projects and plot options. Then we can interact with the graph. That's, that's pretty obvious. We can zoom with the left mouse button, unzoom with the right mouse button, and scroll wheel zooms horizontally. If we hold control and scroll, it zooms vertically. And all these actions are listed if you go to help and click on mouse and keyboard commands. It will open the context help module and you will see a description of all the commands that are can be used on this graph display. So to start our retrial refinement or prepare our retrial refinement, first we need to identify the phases. And there are three different possibilities we can we can do. So the easiest and fastest is just to double click the strongest peak. This is a feature in Profex. It will list the five closest phases that have their strongest peak at the double clicked position. So it's really fast and it works quite often very well, but it can be unreliable. Uh, it's sometimes hard to really hit the, the position correctly. And the other problem is it only searches in the internal database that is bundled with profits. And um, that's at the moment around 1000 phases. And if you compare this to about 400,000 phases in the commercial database or in the free COD database, it's just a tiny fraction. So the second option is to use the internal full pattern search match function in Profex. We will do that afterwards. You will see that it's rather slow, but it's pretty reliable. It's also for residual search when you have found your main phases and are looking for, for the, for the uh, less abundant phases. It can be quite reliable, but also it only searches in the internal database. It's another very strong limitation. And the third option is we can use Profex for peak detection which is usually much better than the other software we will use for phase identification. You will see that it's surprisingly reliable. Can also be slow with certain data sets. And then we perform, so we import the peak positions we extracted in Profix to some other software, some third-party software. 
So we re it re requires a different software, but the advantage is we can search in a large database, either a commercial one from the ICDD or the free COD, for example. And I will demonstrate all three approaches. So let me go back to Profex and we start with double click. That's very simple. We just go here and we have two strong peaks. Let's try this one. I double click and down here it says the best match is appetite O, so oxy appetite. The second best match is hydroxy appetite. And then we have some other probably appetite stuff. And if we zoom out, we can see that indeed all these appetite peaks were measured. So obviously there is appetite. Maybe it's not oxy, maybe it's hydroxy appetite. The difference is, is minuscule. But we also see additional peaks. So there's another strong one here. And if I double click here, it says nitronite. calcopyrite and calcite. So nitronite, let's check um, what peaks we have. So the strongest matches well, but then we have one here that doesn't really match. Also here, just, just the strongest matches. So because the other peaks don't match, I don't think it's nitronite. So it might be one of the others. We can Double click again, maybe change a little bit the position. And now the best match here is calcite. And if we look at calcite, we can see that they all match pretty well here, here. Slightly shifted, the maximum is not exactly here, but at least all the peaks are there. We measured all the peaks at a slightly different position. So from that, I would conclude that it's a mixture of appetite, hydroxy or oxy appetite and calcite. Also, when I double click, the phase is loaded here in, in the list of reference structures. So there are some other, other calcites, some with magnesium, some without. This one, the pure only calcite actually matches very well. So that's the double click approach. And if you're working in a, in a limited uh, environment with synthetic materials, it's usually very efficient. Just double click and you will know what it is. Also, you can select a certain repository. So the structures in, in, that come with Profex are, are uh, organized in different categories. Um, for example, um, ceramics, cement, some the ones I, I, I imported from the BGMN developer team are separated. That's mostly natural minerals in BGMN. Here's another minerals. So I could also click here, try again, and it will only search in the minerals subfolder. So you can create your own subfolder with your phases and then the choice is so limited that you will immediately find the correct phase. Okay. Um, so the second approach, if, if this doesn't work, if you don't find a, a satisfying solution, we can use the search match module in Profex. And we can open it from a window and open search match phases. This will open this module on the right. Then Again, we, we um, have to select where we want to search. And here I really recommend to not search everywhere because it's very slow. Searching a thousand phases will take forever. So instead of clicking here, um, select maybe minerals in this case because it's both natural minerals, both phases. Then we could apply some restrictions, chemical restrictions, limit our search to a certain subset of elements, but at this point we will just leave it blank. And then we have to provide some information about the data collection. And it starts with which instrument configuration we used. And Profex comes with a whole list of 
of prepared instrument configurations. And you should find your own there at some point. But at, since this was measured on my instrument, we want to select the one starting with RMS. And then, so if I go to the beginning, RMS D8 ADS15. That's the configuration that describes my instrument setup. I was using copper radiation, so that's that I will leave untouched. And then I can restrict in which angular range it will perform the search. Again, this helps drastically to speed up the search match process. So I decided to search only from 10, so I capture this lowest peak here, up to 41, so I will stop in this gap here. That should be enough to identify my phases because they both have strong peaks in this range. And then the rest I left untouched. And to start the search match process, I click on the I at the top, and then it will run through the list of, I don't know, 70 phases, something like that, and perform the search match process. If you process the same data set from example one, um, you should also get calcite as the best match. And if we click on calcite, it will again select it from the reference structures menu, and we can verify if all calcite peaks are really, were really measured. And that looks good. So what I want to do next is I want to find the second phase. So I want to keep calcite. I select it here, and then I can pin it. So by clicking this arrow down, it's now fixed to this project. So it will search with calcite and try to find the next best match. And all I have to do is after pinning calcite, I run search match again. And you can see the calcite peak is always fitted and now it tries to find what else fits the other peaks. So that's what we call a residual search. And the more phases we pin, the more phases it will calculate during these cycles of search match and the slower it will get. So it's still okay now with two phases, so the calcite and one of the others it tries to match, uh, but if we add more it will get even slower. Um, that's also the reason why in the controls here we want to limit the angular range where we perform the search to keep it fast. Also, we select only a cert certain repositories, only the minerals in this case, just to keep it fast. Now, I think there will be a problem because appetite is not stored in the minerals repository because we have a separate phosphate repository. So we couldn't find appetite because it's not in, we searched in, in the wrong or the other repository. So I have to run it again on the phosphate repository and then we should find appetite very easily. And we can already see in the score list, there are different hydroxy appetites. So the appetite OH is hydroxy appetite. There are, there's one, the hexagonal structure, this simple appetite OH. Then there are two monoclinic versions, and there is one copper substituted hydroxyapatite. Um, so this takes a bit of uh, experience. If you know your sample, you, you will know what is best. And here it's the simple hydroxyapatite. I know it's a synthetic sample. There is no copper involved, so it's certainly not this one. It could be the monoclinic version or the hexagonal version. The, the, the differences are tiny. So it's just easier to, to pick the, uh, the standard OH appetite, which is the hexagonal. Then also I, I can check again, perfect match here. Certainly this is the correct choice, so I can pin it. I could continue now performing another residual search if I still have peaks that are not assigned, but 
I don't think there are any additional peaks. So the search match is done. And I, I will just show you as a preview, you don't have to do this now, how we would proceed with the refill refinement now. It's very simple. We can create a project. Both phases are already checked because I pinned them. So I click OK and I can run my refinement. That's it. Now, it's not, not a perfect refinement strategy. We have to work on this, but this is my first street file refinement. It's very simple. But we are not there yet. So we have the third option to run search match using an external software. So now what I want to do, I want to run a peak search in Profex, then export the peak list and import it in, in another software and run search match there in the other software. It's also rather simple. Under run, you will find peak detection, run peak detection. If I click this, it will ask again, which instrument configuration did I use? So it knows what peak shape my instrument generates. And I will select again the RMS D8 ADS instrument. Also, I'm using copper radiation again. That's what I used for the measurement. And I click OK. This can also be rather slow if you, if you have nanocrystalline materials, very wide peaks. This process can be slow, but here it's okay. It's a reasonable time. So now it, it detected peaks. And if I go to window, I can show the peak list. It's one of these dockable windows. So here is my list of detected peaks. And now to export these peaks to a text file. If I go to this symbol with the, with the cogwheel here, I can select Save Peak Data to File. For the file format, I have to use not the default, not the CSV, but one of the others. For example, the D-value list. Because this is what the other software can import. So I save this to a diff file. Okay, that's all we do in Profex. Now we can switch to another software. And first I want to show it with Qualex. Qualex is a program that is free of charge. It's developed by an Italian group. Um, you can download it for Windows, but you have to register. You have to give your email address and you can download it for free. Unfortunately, only for Windows, so the second option will be commercial match, but it will also run on Mac and Linux, as far as I know. So in, now I'm in Qualex, and first I want to open the diffraction pattern. And now I forgot one step in Profex, because Qualex cannot read the Bruker files. So I forgot to do that. So back in Profex, I have to save the measured scan to a text format. And I can do that very easily if I click it, highlight it here, I can select, so right click and select export scan. And then I select this ASCII free format scan, the XY format. I leave the, now I can maybe shorten the name a little bit. Oh no, I just leave it like this. No, it doesn't accept this one. So now in Qualex, I can read this XY text file with my scan. Here it is. Qualex will also ask me information which radi radiation did I use. Copper, again, with this, uh, this wavelength in Ongström. And now I could either use Qualex to detect the peaks or I import my Profex peak list. And once you start comparing the two, also with match afterwards, you will see that the way Profex or actually the BGMN kernel detects peaks is extremely reliable. And it's sometimes much easier to do it in Profex, export the peak list and import here, than 
trying to, to find the peaks here. Not always, but sometimes. So I go to... Um, I have to cheat. Pattern import peaks from file. Still in Qualex. And then I will find my file that I exported from Profex before. And here are the peaks. And all I have to do is run search match from the search menu. And this is my score list. Number one, appetite, hydroxyapatite, so all kinds of appetites. So I can pin this or accept, it's called here. So look down here. If uh, It's a little bit off screen. Maybe if I uh, reduce the window a little bit. So by checking this, this button here, I can accept it. And then it runs automatically a residual search and second match for the residual peaks is calcite. We can also accept this. Oops, just one. So I found the same phases, hydroxyapatite and calcite. In Qualex, um, it mentions the, the number of the database record here in the card column. It starts with 00, zero and on the slides it will be explained that what comes after the initial 00, zero so the 901, is the COD database record. So if we search in the COD database, we will have to enter this number here without the minus character in between. So 9011096. That's that we will need when we import structure files we found in Qualex into Profex. Before we do that, let's, let me show you how the same process works in Match. So as I said, Match is a commercial product. It runs on Windows, Mac and Linux. And it can use either the free COD database, the same used by Qualex, or it can also use the commercial ICDD PDF4 database, or even PDF2, but we need the PDF4 for read file refinement. The process is pretty much the same. So we open a file, we go, uh, th this one, this one can, can read Bruca files. So we can, for example, open the raw file, we wouldn't need the XY file. And then under peaks, we select import from file and it opens somewhere else. So I go to the same folder, I op in import the same file. Now it asks again some questions. Is it X-rays or neutron? Which wavelength? Copper, K alpha? And is it to theta values or D values? We export the D values, so I do this. And here are my imported peaks. So I run search match here. Now on my computer it is using the commercial ICDD database. So we will get different entries. And again, the first one is some kind of hydroxyapatite with gadolinium. The second one is pure hydroxyapatite. So I prefer this one. And then it finds, uh, the residual search finds calcite. So I accept this. Now I have, again, identified both phases. All these steps I just performed live are also described on the slides, if you want to reproduce them. I found in the, either the COD database or the, C, the PDF4 database the phases in my sample. And the question is, how do I get them into Profex? So I have to, if it's not part of the default Profex collection of structures, I have to import them. Also, on a side note, this is an important comment down here. There's the cheaper PDF2 database from the ICDD. It doesn't contain structural information. It only contains peak positions and intensities. 
This is good for phase identification, but we cannot use these matches for reed felt refinement because we need full structural information. So only the PDF4 plus or whatever it's called nowadays, I think there are different versions and they, they just came out with the PDF5, but this one contains the uh, structural information we need for reed felt refinement. So let's start with the importing files from the COD database. So this is still my match list for, from Qualex. And as I said, the card column at the, on the left of the screen gives me the database number of these two phases in the COD database. And the COD is also included with Profex. It just can't be used for search match. But we can download the structures directly from Profex into Profex and convert them to the right format. And I will show you now how to do that. So in Profex, we go to File, Import Structure File. And then at the top left, there's a button for importing CIF or XML files. And there are different options. And we want to download this from the COD database. So we choose Retrieve from COD database. And now a search dialog opens and you have to check that it says database connected here. If it doesn't, then you have not installed the COD database that comes with Profex correctly. And then we will have to fix it after this lesson. But if it's connected, we can either search for mineral names, appetite, search, and then it comes up with a whole list of all kinds of appetite, chlor appetite, fluor appetite, hydroxy appetite. We could further refine this search, for example, by restricting the number of elements to a certain minimum or maximum number, or we could include certain elements, exclude certain elements, and so on, restrict to room temperature data sets. So, or just pick one from down here. But we already did the search match in, in Qualex. So what I do instead is just enter the number from Qualex here in the COD ID field. So that was here without the first two zeros and without all the minuses. So it's 9011096. 9011096. Search again. So that's exactly what was found by Qualex. If I would want to download this and import in Profex, I check it and click OK. And now it doesn't work because my computer is not connected to the internet. It wants to download it from the internet. And I didn't think of that, but I don't have internet connection here. Does it, did anyone try? Does it work for you? That's, so I will show you what would happen next if I was, would have been able to download the file from the COD. Uh, I can also show you uh, from when I export the file from the ICDD PDF4 database. It just doesn't download it. I will have to export it from the database, but otherwise it's the same process. So I will continue. Match also found two phases down here. And these, I need, of course, access to the PDF database, which I have on this computer. That's the commercial, uh, commercial database. And then I can retrieve these two structure models. The first one is 01. Oops. That would be my hydroxy appetite. And I can see it here. That looks correct. So now from here, I, I, I export the file either as a CIF file like this, or I can also use the internal, the, the proprietary XML format from, from the P 
PDF for a database. So I will I will choose the XML file. It contains a little bit more information. Save it somewhere on the desktop here. And then I do the same with CarSite. That was poor. Synthetic car site, that looks good. Export either to ZIF or this file. Okay, now I have them stored on my hard drive. Back in Profex, now I can import them as local files. I don't need to search in the COD. Here I choose between the different supported formats. Now this is the ICDD XML format and I save them here. I can select both, open. And now here I can still see the source file. So that would be either the ZIF file or in this case the XML file that I downloaded. And this here is the Profex specific or the BGMN specific structure file, what I want. And at the bottom is a stick pattern if this stick pattern shows up, it means that the file was verified successfully. It was able to, from, from the converted file, it was able to calculate the stick pattern. If this doesn't show up, it will show messages here and that some of the ZIF files are faulty or, or incomplete and then the conversion doesn't work. And then you will find information here, what went wrong. And usually the easiest is to just pick another zip file for the same phase because the COD contains multiple entries for almost everything. So sometimes it's just easier, instead of trying to fix it by hand, it's just easier to download a different phase file from, from the COD. But here both worked, CalSide as well. You can also check the calculated density if it's realistic and most probably this converted structure file is correct. And then we save them both using this save button. You should accept the default location. That's quite important um, because it's, it's saved to a specific folder that will not be erased when you update Profex or uninstall Profex. So save it to the default folder just to be on the safe side. And now this was Appetite. just so we recognize which one it is. And the same with CalSite. And then when I close, it will run something in the background. It will index the files. We don't need this anymore. I don't need this anymore. And now if I search for Appetite, which somewhere I should find my new workshop phase. So now it's part of the collection of structures in Profex. And from there I can start creating a refinement project. Also CalSite, just to check if, if it's really worked, it's here. So that would, the conversion would also happen automatically when we download zip files from the COD database. It would import them, convert, verify, show the stick pattern, and we could just save it from there. So to summarize phase identification options in Profex, um, we have these three options. Either double click on the strongest peak, if the phase is already part of Profex, already bundled, then it should be able to find it. Same with the search match module. Also, um, if the, it will only search in the, among the phases that are already part of Profex. It's a bit slower, but it uh, can be more reliable yeah. at identifying the phase. Or you can choose the, to detect the peaks in Profex, export the peak list and use some other software. Of course, you can also search and match totally without Profex. So just run it in Match or in Qualex. You don't have to use this peak detection function in Profex. It's just, I just wanted to show it because sometimes it's more reliable 
sometimes it's just faster to just do it in prof in in uh, match or coalex. Then, if the matched phases are not bundled with profex, you will have to retrieve them from one of the two big databases, or you can manually search in in the ICSD, for example, if you find it there. Um, and then you have to import these files using the file import dialog and convert to the structure format used by Profex and BGMN. And then everything is ready for our first read file refinement.